whether it be roads, hospitals, or schools. Infrastructure deficits in the satellite towns of Abuja is in focus this week on Dateline Abuja. And on this episode, even though we're not going to a satellite town, we make our way to Lube, where the residents are asking for help with the roads there. And we take a look back at some of the issues encountered by residents of Lube in the past year. To give an understanding of what's really going on in Lube and plans for its infrastructure future, we have a perspective from the FCT authorities. And we have an update of the major stories from Nigeria's presidency. This is Dateline Abuja. Hello and welcome to Dateline Abuja. I'm Kayla Megwa. We have quite a lot to cover today, but not before we bring you up to speed on the major stories from Nigeria's presidency. It's time for our Abuja wrap. Protesters at the Moshud Abiola Stadium in Abuja were dispersed with tear gas during the week as police fired several canisters to chase them from the facility. The police did not give any reason for dispersing the protesters from the gate of the stadium in the nation's capital. This is coming after days of protests across the country and the nation's capital where violence and lootings were recorded. Earlier, the Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mr. Mohamed Idris, stated his belief that there is no need for the planned nationwide protest, maintaining that most of the demands of the protesters have been addressed. The minister stated this while addressing State House correspondence after the Federal Executive Council meeting in Abuja. Mr. Idris revealed that the council meeting deliberated on the protest and concluded that the issues are already being addressed. The position of the Federal Executive Council is that most of the demands that the protesters, protesters are making are actually being addressed by the federal government. And therefore, um, it is the view of government that there is really no need for the protest again. Indeed, the president is already protesting on their behalf by doing those things that they want a government to do. Uh, for example, the effort that government is making in ensuring that food is being made available. There is also rice that is being sold at about 50% uh, of its cost. Centers have been created so that those who need this rice can go there and buy this rice at 40,000 Naira. The Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation Limited, NNPCL, has been directed to, with immediate effect, commence the sale of crude oil to Dangote Refinery and other local refineries in Nigeria. This directive, which was approved by the Federal Executive Council, was disclosed by the Special Advisor to the President on Revenue, Mr. Zakios Adedeji. That's effective if immediately that uh, uh, NNPC get engaged with local refineries and we are starting that with Dangote refinery that uh, the sales of crude oil to Dangote refinery be denominated in Naira and also uh, the sales of uh, refined products from Dangote refinery to uh, marketer and distributors also should be conducted in Naira. President Bola Tinubu has signed into law the minimum wage bill, which sets the new national minimum wage at 70,000 Naira. The president signed the bill during the Federal Executive Council meeting at the council chamber with a National Assembly delegation led by the president of the Senate, Senator Godswill Akbabio. The Minister of Finance and the Minister of State Labor who were among some of the ministers invited to speak by the president, said everything will be done to ensure the act is implemented speedily. Every effort will be made to ensure that there is speedy and full implementation of this new all-important minimum wage act, um, definitely at the federal level, but also we will uh, encourage that this is a national minimum wage. 
The Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Mr. Nyosom Wike, is commending the efforts of local security groups within the nation's capital for the improved security within the city. Mr. Wike made the statement while inspecting projects in Kuali Area Council where he received rescued abductees. According to the minister, Nigerians will benefit from the renewed hope agenda of President Bola Tinubu only if they're patient as more results unfold. Security is not only in the hands of government. Security is for everybody. Government provides logistics to the security agencies. And so the local vigilantes have taken it upon themselves too to contribute to security of the place to make sure their environment is peaceful and people go about their normal businesses. I thank them for what they did, for that briefness, by confronting the kidnappers and rescuing uh, these five of these uh, victims. Welcome back. Residents of the Federal Housing Authority, Lugwe, are soliciting the federal government's intervention over the poor state of the roads in the area. These residents told Channels Television that roads in Lugwe have not received any major maintenance in the last 10 years. As the city centre gets the much-needed facelift it's getting, Abuja's satellite towns are in dire need of critical infrastructure. And that call has started in earnest with the residents of Lugwe. Please watch this. This is Lugwe, a residential district and town in Abuja, under the Abuja Municipal Area Council, chaired by this man, Christopher Mekalanguzaka. The town covers approximately 50 square kilometers and is a countryside settlement expanding on the urban fringe of Abuja. The area is site to a Voice of Nigeria transmission station, Federal Housing Authority Estate, and the National Space Development and Research Agency. Over the years, Lube has had issues with its infrastructure. Flooded estates and demolitions have been the bane of the existence of residents of Lube. Most recently is this demolition on the 7th of August 2023 at a timber shed along the Ring Road 3, Lube Federal Housing Authority site of the proposed electricity corridor line of the Transmission Company of Nigeria. Gloomy faces and downcast eyes, scrambles to save what they can amidst the sense of loss, both emotional and financial, sweeping through these onlookers, most of whom are shop owners at the timber shed, which has been demolished here by the Federal Capital Development Authority. Owners of some of these demolished shops say they were not given enough time to move their things. The notice was too sudden because before cancellation, there's always provision. You make provision for good roads. So this is what they are doing now. Everybody got their money from hard and sweat. Now, They've demolished this thing now. There is no basis for where they are relocating to. So, if government will, be, there is a way, if you want to do something, make provision before cancellation. That's what we're saying. I feel very bad because I lose three shop here now, as you can see. So, it's not, it's not easy. Although they give us time, but the, the time is not enough for us. And some of us, we did not remove our things. But I thank God the people that came, they pity us. They can be able to help us to keep our things outside. Despite these claims of a short notice to vacate the area, the facts say something totally different. This meeting was held on the 16th of June, 2023. And seated in this conference room are the leadership of traders of the timber shed, in a meeting with the Federal Capital Territory Development Authority and representatives from the Transmission Company of Nigeria. At this meeting, the traders were reminded that they were given a notice to evacuate the area a year ago. The Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCM, is reinforcing its high voltage transmission line along the corridor of Ring Road 3, where you are operating your businesses. And we have been adequately informed and we believed, because we are part of the process, that all affected persons, the project affected persons, have been 
compensated. And we have had courses to remove structures on that particular line of the project. We've had meetings with you. We have served relevant notices. So now that the project is coming, we are hereby intimating you that please, before the parliament control move in with their machines, just pack your items and valuables to allow the project to commence. Looking at the importance of this project as we have highlighted, and looking at also you being business operators, you need to move some items, but then we have to have a middle line. That's why we are giving you a whole week. That is from, we're supposed to go there on the 19th, but now we are shifting it to Saturday. So whatever you want to do, you can do it between today and that Saturday, that fr next week Friday, exactly one week. So please, this is the decision. Perhaps the most popular story from Lube, which lends to this infrastructure deficit, is the yearly flooding of Trademore Estate. A situation the FCT authorities blame on houses built on floodplains, which they say must be demolished. If you demolish a house and you don't demolish the whole of it, or if you remove, if there are 10 houses sitting on the waterways and you remove just one house, has it solved the problem? It can never solve the problem. That is what I want you to understand. If we had, we amassed 116 houses, and out of that 116 houses, only 20 houses were demolished. Other, other 80 something are still sitting on the waterways. Will it solve any problem? Some that were demolished, they are renovating them. What is going to happen? Officials of the estate disagree on the position of the FCT Emergency Management Department. Demolition is not a way out of solving the flood issue in Treadmore. And for your information, the flood we have today is just a flash flood at the entrance, which came as a result of overflowing of the boundaries. It didn't enter any house. It's just there and we can be, all these things can be seen. I don't understand why governments are bent on rendering innocent citizens homeless rather than providing you know, a succor for their problems. Lube's road infrastructure is also cause of concern for residents of the town. This is the Federal Housing Authority, Lube, one of the most popular suburban resettlements along the airport road in the Federal Capital Territory. Notice the shaking shots as we drive along the road. It's evidence of the poor state of the road. From the market to other major business areas, these traders had this to say. This road is affecting us seriously because many motor cannot pass here because of this bad road. So we are begging you people to come and help us so we can be able to sell and feed our family, our children. We are suffering. Things are so hard now that we cannot even sell because of this bad road. During raining seasons, you you can actually barely go out to do things. Like we're now doing business around here now. If it's actually raining, most customers won't be able to come around here. Lugbe is home to many of the middle class and lower class residents of the nation's capital. Some of these residents have even tried to remedy the situation themselves to no avail. We proceed to two other areas along the airport road, Sabon Lube and Ako Estate, and a similar situation is what we found there. <laughs> Efforts to reach out to the chairman of the Abuja Municipal Area Council, Mr. Christopher Mekalanguzaka, for a word on this situation proved abortive. However, in June of 2024, he flagged off the construction of a 1.5-kilometer road in Lube. Some residents considered this as insignificant because it is not a major access road into the area. As the FCT authority embarks on building and or rehabilitation of road infrastructure in the city center, one thing in the hearts of most residents of these areas like Lube is the need for urgent remedial action on the road infrastructure here in order to improve their living conditions. My guest on the program is Mr. Richard Dowdu, 
the Acting Director Engineering Services at the Federal Capital Development Authority. What's the plan for roads in Lube and infrastructure in Abuja's satellite towns? Please watch this. Mr. Richard Dauda, welcome to Dateline Abuja. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I mean, when it comes to road infrastructure mm. in the FCT, we're going to, we're, we're going to try <laughs> and go around. But, when, you know, the suburbs mm -hmm. are the ones who are complaining right now. Yes, there's a lot of work being done in the city center. Mm. But places like Lube are still having to deal with bad roads. Just so we can understand what the plan is for suburbs like Lube that still have to deal with this problem. Permit me to give you a little background mm -hmm. about uh, how the city is, is structured or planned. Uh, the city is planned in phases. This is one, two, three, and four. Uh, uh, along those phases, we have the northern and southern corridors, development corridors. Uh, northern corridors, we talk of Maitama, we say, down to places like Karsana, Kagini, Warimpa, and so on. That's a northern development corridor, bounded by expressways on the outer and on the inner part. The same thing with the southern part. The southern part starts from places like Gariki, uh, the Durumi, the Kaura, down to Lokogoma and so on. Now, uh, the expectation was to develop uh, sequentially, face by face, as the population grows. But as you know, uh, several times and for several reasons, uh, we had population explosion. That came, a lot of people came into the city and we have a situation where people have developed even before the infrastructure comes. Uh, as government, government will continue to do its best to provide the infrastructure, uh, particularly, as you know. As, what, what do you do when that happens? I, is that what's happened in Lube, that development came, people <laughs> flooded the place, and development started before the infrastructure? The infrastructure is that what happened in Lube? That is partly what happened in Lube. But you know, Lube itself is situated, situated in a place we call uh, Phase 5 now. Phase five, which I call the planning area. Now, uh, we have phase one to four. Uh, and the idea was to develop phase one to four before we come into phase five. Now we have people in phase five, and phase three and four is still not developed. Now, uh, Lugwe, I believe, because of the access, particularly the airport road, okay. where people can easily join and come into the city. So a lot of people said, apart from that, uh, because of the housing needs, the federal housing approach FCT. Houses are a bit yeah, more yeah. affordable. Yes, a federal in, housing in, authority. In Lube. Yes, uh, they were the first to approach the FCT. FCT gave them the land and they developed houses. Now, when they develop houses, they also provide the infrastructure to the standard for which they provide, which is not in tandem with the standard we provide in the city. Now, uh, because they, they are there already, uh, uh, when, the, when the, the, the FCTA is ready and have sufficient funds to go in there, that is when the infrastructure will be provided. So what happens next? Uh, what happens next is that uh, once it is time and... Uh, so they have to wait until it is they time. They have to wait until we get to that point. You see, there is one, something about uh, uh, development infrastructure in the city. It follows a particular sequence. Now... Take, for example, uh, sewage, solid, uh, liquid waste disposal, uh, or even water supply. Um, if you are going to connect water supply, for example, to the Lugwe area, you will have to come through a phase three. You get it, so that you lay pipes that interconnect sequentially until it gets there. And so once there's a gap, of course, that gap will have to be filled before you get there. So, uh, and as it is, like I told you, the Lugbe area is part of the planning area. But I mean, and a lot know, of people, development. People, have been, people are now there. People Look, are there. Plans change. What are they using? Wait, Mr. Down. <laughs> <laughs> plans change. <laughs> we evolve. And I know that the master plan evolves, adapts, it changes. Could it be that maybe it's important now, mm. since there is a high density of people in places like Lugbe, for instance, 
even with this explanation, is it possible to tilt things such that the infrastructure that these many people require will be provided for before you start to look at the other districts and the other places where they may be following the chronology of the plan for the FCT, mm -hmm. but they do not have the population density of places like Lube. Is that something that the FCDA can even look at? Well, as much as possible, the, the FCD, or rather the FCT administration, uh, uh, seeks to, to develop projects that are people-centered. But again, I told you the paucity of funds is, is, is a very huge challenge, especially for us as a developing uh, nation that is struggling with the economy and so on. It will be our desire that we open up everywhere and be constructing roads and providing water. Unfortunately, we are limited you know, in several ways. And that is why uh, uh, people that now live on Lugbe will have to exercise some patience until, until that comes. Uh, meanwhile, uh, uh, agencies like Federal, Federal Housing Authority that have developed there, I think it behoves on them for now to continue to upgrade and maintain the infrastructure uh, they provided there, pending when the kind of infrastructure we would like to provide will come. As you mentioned also the issue of flooding, you know, as, as the population grew, of course, a lot of the channels that, that existed, some got blocked. In fact, some constricted, some developed even right into the, the riverbeds and so on. So you find that when these channels are constricted, of course, several things happen. One, the streams overflow, especially when the rain season comes. Uh, secondly, the... the the velocity of the water increases, and so the effects downstream. And several other things happen. I know you have heard where uh, houses were submerged. FCT went there several years ago and asked them to evacuate. Some refused, and some even decided to do otherwise. So um, this is recognized. In fact, if I may tell you, the master plan recognized that the location of the federal capital city is such that it's on a plane. We call it Guagua Plains. And so there will be some level of flash flooding. But uh, what, what, what has been done is to provide infrastructure that are resilient and that will be able to, you know, to control this flooding. Uh, there are plans, the master plan has you know, uh, designs to some extent for even river training, uh, stream, you know, stream training, river training, and so on, such that uh, the rivers don't overflow. But as it is, some people have uh, occupied some of them. Uh, some have decided to build culverts that, uh, that don't meet capacity without any sort of studies, which we ordinarily as FC as engineers uh, will do first before okay. some of those developments. Go down up to Karshi, you will see uh, roads have been provided, power supply is done and so on. So it's a progressive, the, the Abuja project itself is a work in progress and I believe we are, we are progressing very well. Thank you very much. I want to thank you so much, yeah. Mr. Richard Dowder, for being thank with you. us on Dateline Abuja. And good yeah. luck with all the work you have ahead thank of you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Good to meet you. Thanks to my guest and to everyone who spoke to us today on the program. The nation's capital has a minister who listens when you complain. Genuine complaints, of course. So let's explore that option. Send pictures or videos of infrastructure deficits in your neighborhood to the social media handle showing right now on your screen. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Kayla Magua. See you next time. <music>